I'm Safi Chatur, cardiologist at Massachusetts General Hospital and instructor in medicine at Harvard Medical School from Boston, Massachusetts. I'm pleased to discuss the risk-benefit trade-off of finerenone across the spectrum of kidney function in the Fine Arts HF trial. Heart failure and chronic kidney disease frequently coexist and jointly contribute to increased risks of cardiovascular events, a progression of uh, kidney disease, and mortality. Such patients often face higher rates of premature drug discontinuation, in part related to uncertainties around the safety and efficacy of guideline-directed medical therapy in this population. And this is particularly true of mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists or traditional mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists. Uh, widespread use of the steroidal MRA spironolactone has been particularly challenging in patients with heart failure and chronic kidney disease due to uh, concerns about increased risks for hyperkalemia and worsening renal function. The Neronone is a non-steroidal MRA, a class of medications uh, with different physiochemical properties. And so we wanted to better understand how chronic kidney disease may alter uh, uh, the risk-benefit profile of finerenone, specifically in patients with mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction. The Fine Arts HF trial was a global randomized trial which enrolled patients with NYHA 2-4 heart failure with mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction with an EGFR as low as 25. Patients were randomized to finerenone or placebo. Finerenone was titrated to a maximum dose of 20 milligrams in patients with an EGFR less than or equal to 60 and a maximum dose of 40 milligrams in, a patient, in patients with an EGFR greater than 60. In this post-hoc analysis of the Fine Arts HF trial, we evaluated the relative and absolute treatment benefits um, of finerenone versus placebo on cardiovascular and safety outcomes across the spectrum of kidney function. There were three key messages. Patients at the lowest EGFR categories experienced the highest rates of cardiovascular events. Number two, both the relative and absolute treatment effects of finerenone relative to placebo on cardiovascular outcomes did not significantly differ across baseline kidney function. And three, while the absolute risks of hyperkalemia were amplified in the lowest EGFR categories, the risk of an adverse event leading to discontinuation were similar across the spectrum of kidney function. Despite being at high risk of adverse kid, uh, cardiovascular events, patients at this intersection of heart failure and kidney disease often face high rates of premature drug discontinuation or failure to initiate therapy altogether. The main take home message of this analysis is that the risk benefit trade off of finerenone appears favorable. And so Kidney function alone should not detract from the initiation of finerenone. However, more frequent monitoring uh, and dose adjustment at the lower EGFR categories uh, may be required. These data also highlight the importance of strategies to improve treatment persistence of MRA, particularly in these high-risk patients with chronic kidney disease. This includes the use of novel potassium binders, as well as combination therapy with SGLT2 inhibitors, which has been shown to potentially mitigate the risk of hyperkalemia and enable more broad use of MRA, a strategy which might be particularly useful in patients with chronic kidney disease. The use of MRAs in heart failure care more broadly remains suboptimal. And this is evident, a trend that is evident across healthcare registries globally. Considerations around the implementation of MRA use is a key next step. As we start to think about real world implementation, cost is an important barrier. While non steroidal MRAs may have improved tolerability relative to steroidal MRAs, cost may be prohibitive. And so um, a key question among many minds is is there a class effect? The SPIRIT HF trial and SPIRIT HEF-PEF trials, which are ongoing, will provide more data around the use of spironolactone in patients with preserved ejection fraction heart failure specifically. What about the use of finerenone across various clinical settings? The ongoing Moonraker program will provide insight on the use of finerenone across various clinical settings among 15,000 patients, including those hospitalized uh, with heart failure, including among those with combination SGLT2 inhibitor therapy, 
and in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction who are intolerant or um, ineligible for steroidal MRA. Lastly, zooming out, taking a 10,000 foot view of cardiovascular care, there is great imperative to develop best practice in drug implementation alongside data informing safety and efficacy. And that involves uh, exploring innovative new strategies which integrate digital uh, technologies, uh, principles from implementation science and behavioral economics, and leverage um, learning health systems in order to reduce clinical inertia and optimize cardiovascular care at scale at the population level. Thank you.